My name is Tony Gonzalez. This is Made in Metal. I, I am wearing this T-shirt because I received it today. It's on a special edition, 50 years of Aqualum. Ah. I hope to see uh, 50 years of Fifth Angel first CD one day. A celebration. <laughs> <laughs> we might, we might do that. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> Uh, let me tell you, Ken, that I was born in Cuba, and there in Cuba we follow most of your bands. A Fifth Angel, when you were in Alice Cooper, the recordings you did with uh, David T. Chastain were fabulous. And uh, House of Lords, the first lineup, when we saw the first lineup, we were really, really amazed with, with this. I know that you are here because we are going to talk about the new Floxan and Jackson, the new CD. But please, if we have time, we are going to talk about the past. Do you mind? Uh, yeah, I don't mind at all. Can we do the Floxan part first, and then do the and then do the other part later? If you, would that work? Yes, I always like to talk to the drummers because I know that a drummer is the cornerstone of the band, the foundation. What do you think? Yeah, I think the drums are a very important position. And I think, you know, you can take a drummer that's maybe not very good and put them in a great band and the band is not going to be a good band. And you could take a great drummer and you could put it in a in an OK band and the band's going to immediately get better. So I think drums, it's a very it's a very important position. I mean, just like lead vocals, I think that's another very important position. I mean, everything's important, but I agree with you. Drums are the foundation of the music. And so if you have a real solid drummer it's it's going to help it's going to help the music the lead vocals and the guitar player they take the girls and the drummer take the job yes <laughs> <laughs> yes so i was looking for information for this interview and i read that some musicians from the band get covid so in your case did you get covid or it was a problem with that I, I did not. Um, the two guitar players, Michael and Steve, both had COVID, and their and their girlfriends both had COVID, and it hit different people in different ways. Some people were very affected and very very sick, and other people didn't have much of a problem with it. You know, sick for a couple of days and then done with it. So it was very weird in terms of you know the response was different for everybody. Mm -hmm. So does this situation affected? the writing or the recording process? I think it did, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, we were uh, going through a time period where Arizona, which is where we live, is uh, probably, it was one of the highest cases per capita in the world. So we had a, a lot of friends, a lot of family. Um, some of them were serious, seriously affected. Some of them went into the hospital. So, uh, you know, we definitely felt it you know, very deeply when we started the writing process, we really couldn't meet. We were just sending tracks back and forth and working on the tracks and sending things to each other. And even when we were recording, you know, I'd be in the control room and AK would be in the tracking room and we would see each other through the glass and say hello. <laughs> we, weren't even, we weren't even in the same room for, for most of this. So it, it definitely affected us. I mean, we, we felt, uh, I think the emotions and some of the feelings ended up on the record. I remember that you entered Floxan and Jackson just when they were promoting a CD simply called Floxan and Jackson. Well, it was really a, a seamless process. I mean, I had recorded the drums uh, for the self-titled album at my studio. That was, you know, Jason Bittner was in the band and, and he was playing drums and I was engineering. So. Uh, you know, that that had been done at, at my studio um, and then Steve Connolly also engineered. When Jason left the band, you know, I was very familiar with the band. I loved the self-titled CD that was in my car for months. I loved listening to that album. So I was very impressed with, uh, you know, AK. His voice has gotten more seasoned and, in my opinion, better. Uh, and the songs were great songs. And so... When Jason left, Steve Conley said, "Hey, do you want to, you know, you want to hit some things really fast?" <laughs> yes. And I, uh, you know, yeah, let's let's give it a shot. So they they asked me to fill in on an 11 uh, day, I think it was an 11 day tour in Europe, and I did. And then you know, four years later, I'm still here. I remember 
that you were here in Spain maybe two years ago. At, right. at Leyendas the Rock, yeah. I didn't know that you were the drummer that night. If I knew it, I will try to contact you to talk a little. And I remember now that you tell me this about Eric A.K. Boys. When I listened Doomsday for the Deceiver, the first Floxan and Jackson, and now I listen Floxan and Jackson, I see, I see Eric has changed a lot the way that he sings. Yes, is part of the production. I mean, the background vocals, I think, are definitely um, part of the production. Uh, his vocal tone and his approach, uh, I just think that, you know, his voice has changed. And, you know, I think it's become, you know, heavier and, and thicker. And, and uh, you know, I personally like it a lot better myself. You know, I know that there's some people that, that like the young AK, but I, I like his voice now. <laughs> Me too. But I thought that it was because, you know, the years are passing by and that he can't uh, sing songs like he took an ax. That is a very complicated song in vocal uh, style. But when I saw you at Leyendas the Rock, he sings, and he sings really well. I was really impressed. Yes, he does. You know, that, yeah, that's what I was saying. I, I had another interview uh, last week and they said well hey you know eric can't hit those high notes anymore and i was like yeah he can <laughs> okay so there are two songs in the cd that i consider you apply a special abuse of your drums the first is one of the singles one is brace for impact when in the middle section you play with your hands and it's really beautiful Yeah, it's a, you know, that's the, uh, that was almost the title song for the record. It was between that and Blood in the Water. So uh, Brace for Impact, yeah, I think it has a beautiful breakdown. I think there's some really interesting syncopation uh, ideas going on in that section. Uh, I think it's a, it's a very powerful, very aggressive song. It was a, a lot of fun to play on. Yes, this is something that maybe the band should be proud. Now, when you go on tour for DCD, I think that you can play at least six or seven songs and it's going to be a good show. Well, you know, normally on a, on a new album, you know, just because you have such fan favorites, you know, we have songs that we have to play. Um, I don't know if we could play six of them, but, may, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll get away with three. <laughs> yes. When I listen Brace for Impact, I think of this question. When did you set the drum parts? Are you free to do what you consider it is the best or they give you a strict rhythm for be released? Yeah, I mean, the, the writing process within the band is very fluid and everybody kind of, you know, we don't have a quote unquote producer. So, you know, we produce the albums ourselves. And so, you know, as long as everybody is enjoying what the parts are, you know, we're, we're pretty, we're free to do whatever we want to do, which is, which is really amazing. And so it's, what I always say that a Flotsam album is, it's five guys going nuts the whole time. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, there's all this drum stuff in there. There's all this vocal stuff. There's all this guitar stuff. You know, everything's going crazy. And somehow it works and it's musical and it makes sense and it's fun to listen to. And, you know, somehow, somehow we don't even know how. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, did you participate in the writing process? Yes, we all participated in the writing process. Um, I mean, certainly there's uh, there's members that you know have have a greater share of the writing. You know, people like Steve, you know, Mike. Um, you know, I I had some good input on this album actually. Uh, the song Seven Seconds" was was my song that I brought in. Um, I would certainly helped out on lyrics and melodies uh, quite a bit on this album, more so than the last album. So. You know, when people say like, who's, you know, who's writing it, it's really a, a very fluid process. There are different 
teams that work sometimes. Uh, the thing that's great about the band is there's this there's this amazing chemistry where um, usually the song comes in from Steve or Michael. You know, they'll have the music and then, you know, AK will write something or maybe I'll write something. And then we start working on the songs and we start putting them together and seeing which ones everybody wants to finish off. And so, um, you know, sometimes a song like like Seven Seconds would be myself and Steve. Uh, a Place to Die would be like AK and Steve. Um, Blood in the Water would be Steve and I. Uh, uh, Brace for Impact is AK and Mike. You know, so there's different teams that happen. Uh, to and, and it's really interesting because all the songs sound like Flotsam and Jetsam, mm -hmm. but it's different components of writers, like different teams of writers that are, that are putting the songs together. So, you know, it's, it's really, you know, it's really a, a team effort, you know, on the, on the record, you know, that's, that's the best thing I could say. You know, everybody seems very interested in the writing on this one. I, I don't remember this many questions about writing on the last album. And I wonder, you know, is that because people think that something different is happening, you know, and I think it is, I think the band is growing and there's a chemistry happening there. That's, that's getting better. And, uh, you know, we honestly didn't know if we were going to be able to make an album that was better than the end of chaos. We were just hoping that we would make something as good. <laughs> and it looks like we might have made something better, which is, you know, all the indications are, you know, from the reviews and everything, it looks like people feel like we made an even stronger record. So we have no idea what we're going to do next time. <laughs> the other song that uh, I like it a lot and I pay attention is Wicked Hour. Wicked Hour, yep. Yes, because when I listen, you playing drum there, it made me think that you are an, an old school drummer because even when your feet are fast, you give an special attention to hand to hand. Well, thank you. I appreciate the compliment. And yeah, I, I think it's, uh, you know, obviously our influences and who we are are definitely going to come out on different songs in different ways. But I, that's one of my favorite songs, too. I agree. The drums are interesting on that song. And I had a great time with the drums on the whole record. I mean, really, it was a, a fun record to do and and uh, and very um, organic. I mean, it was a very easy process. It seemed like everything flowed. You know, if, if there was a song and it wasn't quite there and somebody would have an idea and bring it in and finish it off. And and, uh, you know, it, it really was a very interesting process. And, and I've been involved in a lot of bands, as you know. And this was probably the one of the greatest examples of a, of a team effort that I've seen on creating a record. Even when you don't know me, I know you for <laughs> maybe 20 years for a lot of records that you play. And uh, now that I'm talking about this, I'm going to confess you that when I read that you were in Flotsam and Jackson, I was a little amazed because this is not the type of band that you usually play. Sure. Well, you know, what's funny is, uh, you know, I, I agree with that. I think that was a, it was an interesting choice for the, you know, for the band and they weren't sure how it was going to work out. Now for me, I was pretty confident because, you know, I do drum clinics and, and I know that my skill level, you know, playing in Flossum is more difficult probably than playing in something like, you know, Alice or, or another band, you know, I mean, Chastain had some actually pretty intricate uh, songs too. So, I mean, it's not that, you know, I understand it's, it's a different style, but um, certainly I feel well equipped to, to do well in, in this style. There are another couple of songs that are a little different from the rest. One is Walls. The band show its Iron Maiden influences one more time. Please tell me about this song. Is, is my, my, my mind or is it look like Iron Maiden? Well, no, it's definitely a different song. It's a, it's more of a power metal song, and that uh, comes from uh, Steve Connolly. He was writing most of the music, you know, or the, he wrote the music on that, and then AK wrote the lyrics, and then I helped out on the chorus. I kind of I kind of helped out um, formulating the chorus there, changing a little bit of melodies and lyrics and things like that. Um, but as far as the song itself, it is definitely a different uh, type of song. 
uh, as from the rest of the record. I, I agree with that. It's a little bit more. Um, I think Steve said he he wanted to. He he was a Jakey e. Lee fan, and yes. uh, and he he wanted to have a song like that on the record because you know he was a he was a big Jakey e. Lee fan. <laughs> But there is another song. Okay, what you tell me, it match with the idea. Power metal, Jakey e. Lee. But what happened with Undone is very different from the rest. And one more time, your drone shines more than a brand new machine gun. It's really fast, the drum, but the music is very different from the rest. Tell me something about the song. Oh, Undone. Undone. Yeah. I believe that was, uh, I'll have to double check, but I think that was Steve and AK. And um, I, I think the, uh, That the song, in terms of you know the drumming, I always try to do what I can to fit the song. You know, like if, if a song comes in, you know, I obviously want to add to it and uh, you know add some energy and add some life and add some yeah you know add some zip to it. So you know that song in particular, um, you know, I, I agree with you. It's a little it's a little different uh, from the rest of the record, but I think it's you know. There's not any songs that we don't feel strongly about on the album. I mean, which is really nice. You know, a lot of times bands, they're like, well, we love these four songs, but these other ones, you know, we don't really like. And for us, you know, we love all the songs on the record. You know, we, we had plenty of songs to choose from and uh, we tried to pick the very best because we figure, you know, if we love it, then the fans are going to love it. So. Uh, as far as that particular song, I agree with you. It's a, it's a little different, but as far as you know, I think you're asking me what I how the approach was on the drums, and for the approach on the drums, you know, I I always try to fit the song and then bring something hopefully special, you know, that make it make it a little bit special. So I just listened to your interview in Toilet Radio, and I remember that the host asked you why all the drummers sound the same. And I think that this is not totally true, but now you are sounding in Floxan and Jackson very different than when you were playing, even in the recent House of Lords CD. Do you remember this part of the interview in Toilet Radio? I think I do, yes. Uh -huh. So you explained that maybe 25 years ago, you spent more money in the production. This It made me think that, for example, in Floxa, in the CDs you have recorded as a drummer, the drums sound a little different because you hit faster and are creative, but not because the sound of the drum is different. Sure. What do you think about this? Well, I think, I think there's a lot of truth to that. And I think uh, one of the things that I talked about in the interview is that, you know, a lot of times, <clears throat> you know, with the way metal is created, Um, and you're correct, the budgets are not, you know, big budgets like we used to have, you know, in the 90s. Uh, you know, the, the recording budgets are very, are very tight now and you have to be able to do your work efficiently. And so, you know, for metal drumming, there's a, there's a sound that kind of cuts through the guitars because that's a very important thing. You know, as the drums, you have to be able to hear them for them to work, right? And uh, a lot of times in metal drumming, th there are certain frequencies that tend to stick out and cut. You know, kick drums have a lot of top end on them. Toms have a lot of top end on them. Snare have a lot of top end on them. They're, they're kind of thinner sounding, but they cut. They cut through the music. And I think that that's what everybody's referring to. Well, drums sound the same. Well, you know, yeah. And, and plus, you know, a lot of times we have to augment a little bit with um, samples just to you know, make the, make the um, rhythm section cut through. Because in metal, it's not easy. You know, you have this wall of guitars, you've got bass, you've got vocals, and these stacks of vocals that you're cutting through. And uh, it's very difficult to get very clean uh, drums where you can hear everything that's being played in, in that cacophony. I mean, it's really a, a soup of things going on. And so, so to provide that foundation and cut through I agree. I think a lot of metal drums sound kind of the same, except for the performances. I mean, the thing that separates them are the parts that you create and how creative you are in terms of, you know, what you're bringing to the song. But maybe they don't remember that in the 70s and the 80s, a lot of drummers sounds the same. 
Oh, yeah. There were difference, like, for example, Cassie Powell, uh, Carl Palmer, that sounds very different, but a lot of drummers sound the same. And now it's the same. There are a lot of drummers that sound the same and some drummers that sound different. In your case, when did you start using double bass drum? Because I, let me tell you that the only picture that I found about Fifth Angel, I see a double bass drum. Did you use a double bass in Fifth Angel? I did, yes. Wow. I've been Good. using double bass since, you know, since I was a kid. <laughs> yes. Yeah, when I was, you know, yeah, a little Nino. I mean, you know, it's like I, I, I was using double bass, you know, from the beginning. So, you know, that's a weird thing. People don't think of me like that because a lot of the Fifth Angel stuff, which was my first album that I ever played on, you know, there's there is some double bass on that, by the way. Uh, there's a song called The Night that has double bass. But, um, you know, it's very simple drumming because that was the time. You know, that was the time period. It was the mid 80s. You know, drums were very basic and simple and powerful. And, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's a whole lot different style than, than what we have going on now, that's for sure. <laughs> yes. So you were in the basic Fifth Angel, but uh, then when they rejoined the band, you weren't. However, in 2017, you rejoined the band. And uh, did you participate in the first CD? Uh, yeah, that's actually, I produced that and uh and wrote a, a, a great amount of that. So yes, <laughs> I was involved in that. So it was a, a, the situation was a nostalgic or did you think that the band could be ahead more time? Well, uh, the way I looked at it is, uh, you know, it's something that was my first band uh, ever. And I wanted to, you know, we wanted to do another uh, album and the chemistry that was working between the writers, it was mostly, um, Actually, there was three guys. I mean, it was uh, Kendall Bechtel, myself, and John Macko. You know that 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 did that record, and uh, you know it was a, it was a good writing chemistry. We had a lot of fun doing it, um, and uh, you know we had a label that that wanted to do the record. So, you know, we we uh, we you know we tried to make a, another. You know, we always try to make a great album. You know, at least I do, no matter what band I'm working with or, or you know what no matter what record I'm making I always do my best to try to make a great album and I think on third secret you know we we made a, a, a really strong album as well you know in this moment even when you record the best album if you don't go out and play you won't get money that's true so yes. and I thought that maybe you uh, release that CD because you were preparing a tour and you were having a long distance see about the band, but it wasn't, no? Well, you know, we, you never know what's going to happen. And certainly, you know, we live in a day and age where everybody's in, you know, four different bands, <laughs> you know, because everybody's trying to make a living and it's a little bit different than it used to be in the old days. You know, you could be in one band in the old days and do fine. And nowadays, you know, budgets are very short and you know it's it's difficult to really make a living in music now so uh everybody's in a number of bands so you know certainly uh i looked at it like you know this is my high school band and and there's a demand for it and you know let's let's make a great album and let's see what happens but for example in this moment uh, do you think that there are any possibility to bring to life again fifth angel or uh, the other house of lore well, certainly for Fifth Angel, uh, you know, the plan is, you know, the band would, is, you know, doing some writing and working towards, you know, being able to play some shows, certainly. So I would say that one has, you know, has a, has a future. House of Lords, um, I don't know if that's ever going to really have a future. The, the singer uh, took the name House of Lords uh, and, you know, he's the only guy from the band. So, I, you know. It is what it is, but uh, I, I don't think, I don't anticipate we'll be doing any House of Lords records. Oh, it's a real problem. It's a real problem. So uh, basically, Ken, this was the interview. Uh, do you have plans for a European tour next year or not yet? We do. You know, we're, we're going out with Accept in January of 2020. Well, 
we have to see how everything's going to go. But suppose you know it's on the books, and we'll see if we'll see if uh, with the world situation if we're able to to do that. But certainly there are plans to come to Europe, uh, and there are plans to to tour. We're also planning on doing a, a short tour of the Southwest in the United States in August. So we're definitely planning on, on getting out there and, and seeing our fans. I remember that in the interview in Toilet Radio, uh, I think, according to your words, that you are happy to come here to Europe because it's different than the United States. Yeah, we love Europe. I mean, and we love Spain. You know, we, we love the fans in Spain. We had a great time when we were there. Um, It's a beautiful country. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, I was in, we were in Portugal and um, we had such a good time over there that I told my wife, you know, maybe when it's time to retire, maybe we go to Portugal. <laughs> good idea. Very good idea. Yeah. So we, you know, we, uh, we love Europe. We love the, the fans. We love the music scene. The music scene is much better than it is in the United States for us. Um, you know, in, in Europe, I think metal and thrash is very respected. In the United States, it's all pop and rap and, you know, all this other stuff. And, and uh, you know, it really has nothing to do with us. And, uh, you know, there are a few metal bands that do okay in the United States. But, you know, it's, it's not, you know, Europe is definitely a, a much better place. Yes. So, Ken, it was really nice to talk to you. So I enjoyed this uh, interview a lot. And I hope that you stay in Floxon and Jackson for years. Well, it looks, it looks like that should be the case. And I just want to thank you for the interview, Tony. It's very nice meeting you. And I want to say thank you for your support over all the years. Sounds like you've been listening to records for a very long time. <laughs> yes. So, uh, you know, I appreciate you following my career and, and uh, supporting all those records. It's very appreciated. Okay, Ken, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You have a great day. Evening. Have a great evening. <laughs> you too. Bye-bye. <laughs>